Stelle, glaube ich, noch mal an das andere Fenster. Und noch einmal Deutschland. A blazing fire, the news spreading across Germany. Adolf Hitler, Chancellor of the Reich. A million hearts burning up with joy. And we can see banners glowing blood red. And in the center of each one, the symbol of our hope. Crooked cross, the swastika, look at that. January the 30th, 1933. Nazi brown shirts salute their Führer, their leader, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> His rise seemed the answer to many people's dreams. We will have a new Germany! And we can see thousands of blazing torches now, streaming up the Wilhelmstrasse, long columns of brown shirts, victors, in a painful struggle. The brown shirts were the foot soldiers of the Nazi movement. Years later, one of them, Fritz Mullerbach, described his memories of that extraordinary night. We were, I don't know, like just laughing, you know. We, we sang, we shouted Heil till we were hoarse. I mean, Adolf Hitler, leader of Germany. We couldn't believe it. When the news came through on the radio, we ran round to a meeting house. And they got everything ready. I mean, they were handing out torches. And the best thing, when we marched, the police guarded our path. Like after so many years, the streets were finally ours. Yeah! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! <laughs> but not every German joined the brown shirts in their celebration that night. For they knew that now in power, the Nazis would allow no opposition. And all those that stood against them, Hitler had promised to destroy. Our enemies say we Nazis are intolerant, that we are somehow un-German, because we refuse to cooperate with other political parties. I want to make one thing quite clear. They're right. We are intolerant. And I have set myself one task, namely to drive those other parties out of Germany. Hitler's rise to power would cause death and suffering on a scale rarely seen in history. Yet on January the 30th, 1933, many millions of Germans welcomed Adolf Hitler as their savior. Why? Three years earlier, 1930, Fritz Mullerbach returns to the northern dock town of Hamburg after a spell at sea and finds Germany in a terrible state. There was no work to be had. Germany, the worst hit country in a worldwide depression. In the streets, chaos and the police unable to keep order. From every direction, parties promised they had the solution. Communist, Social Democrat, Nazi. 35 parties in all. But right from the start, it was Hitler's Nazis that caught Fritz Mullerbach's eye. They were like smarter than the other parties. The Communists, Social Democrats. I mean, the Nazis had uniforms, and their boots were like jack boots, always shining. It's impressive. And then, one night, I'm down the docks, and I says, this fight, well, this fella getting beaten up. So, I goes in to help him, gets myself a torn ear. It turns out he's this brown shirt. He says, uh, why don't you come along, you know, to a meeting? That was how I got started. <laughs> 
Over the next few months, Fritz went to many Nazi party meetings. He heard speakers, he watched slideshows, he read pamphlets. And he shared a room with the brown shirt he'd rescued. From Werther, he learned why, according to the Nazis, Germany was in such a mess. He learned how, according to the Nazis, Germany would recover. Hey, I've got something for you. Have you ever read the Bible? The Bible? Uh, no. Well, you should. Here. My Struggle. Yeah, My Struggle. By Adolf Hitler. Well, it's my Bible anyway. 1924, Landsberg Prison, he wrote that. They locked him up for speaking the truth. Can you believe that? And in prison, he writes this. And now, I give it to you. So, enjoy. My struggle, Mein Kampf. It's a mishmash of autobiography and history and racist venom. It covers everything from Hitler's blind hatred of the Jews to his love of boxing. But like no other source, it explains the roots of Nazism. And it dates the decline of Germany from 1918, the surrender that ended the First World War. The German army will see first immediately and then surrender in good condition. 5,000 field guns, 25,000 machine guns, 3,000 trench mortars. 1, I'd never cried since the day I'd stood at my mother's grave, but now I couldn't help it. Was it all in vain, the deaths of two million heroes? I dug my burning head into my pillow and wept. Back home in Germany, revolution. The Kaiser, Germany's all-powerful ruler, had fled. In his place, democracy, politicians chosen by popular vote. For many soldiers defeated at the front, Hitler amongst them, it seemed this revolution back home had cost Germany the war. I mean, do you think the army couldn't have won that war? They were stabbed in the back. Stabbed in the back, right. Betrayed by cowards, politicians, Jews back home. They didn't care for our honour. And all the shame our country suffered since. The criminals of November 1918. It's them has caused it all. In 1919, these same so-called criminals signed the Versailles Peace Treaty on Germany's behalf. They accepted war guilt they agreed to pay out vast sums for war damage, despite the desperate state of Germany's war-torn economy. When years of suffering followed, inflation, food shortages, hunger, many Germans were quick to point the finger of blame. The factory owners. Right! Fat cats! Bleeding the workers dry? We say no one earns more than 1,000 marks a month. No one. The Jews. Right. The old enemy. When they do something, they don't do it for Germany, do you see? They're not Germans. Who else? The parties. The parties. Politicians, right. What is this democracy? We never used to have democracy. We had strong leaders. The Kaiser, eh? We never voted for him. And was Germany ever so weak under the Kaiser? I spit on freedom. It's the patriotic thing to do. What was happening was like, I don't know, like fog, you know, clearing. And suddenly it all made sense. I mean, we'd never talked about politics when I was a kid, but Werder. Well, they'd go on for hours. And it was all so right. You've got all these parties, and no one party's got enough votes to rule, yeah? So, they do deals. They're always selling out. Well, the Nazis, right from the start, they're saying that's not the German way. 
Right from the start, the Nazis wanted an end to democracy. They wanted all power back in the hands of one man, and that one man, they felt, should be Adolf Hitler. He drifted from the army to politics. He'd gathered support in the beer halls of Munich. But his time was not yet right. When 4,000 Nazi brown shirts rose in rebellion in November 1923, their weapons arrived without firing pins. Hitler was imprisoned, wrote Mein Kampf, and the first chapter of Nazi history was over. Germany in the late 1920s. Music, theater, cinema, cabaret. Enormous energy eaten up seeking serious pleasure. These were the years Fritz spent at sea. Not that the good times were for working class lads like him. Meanwhile, Hitler saw the nightclubs and found them shameful. He'd begun to see himself as some hero of old, his mission to slay the monster of democracy. Our public life today encourages this wallowing in pleasure. We must clean away this filth, this plague, and we must clean it away ruthlessly and without wavering. Hitler's problem was simply persuading Germans they needed some knight in shining armor. But then, on October the 24th, 1929, Wall Street crashed. The worldwide depression that followed hit Germany hardest of all. With some satisfaction, Hitler realized his day had come. Such contentment. Never in my life did I feel such contentment. To see hard reality open the eyes of so many millions of Germans deceived for so long. In three years, German production halved. Thousands of small businesses collapsed. Unemployment rose to six and a half million. 17 million, a third of the population, were supported by the dole. I just got back from sea, laid off. It was terrible. You looked around at all that misery. Men just hanging around on street corners. Queues down the labour exchange, you thought, this is hopeless. I won't get a job. Those in work that had the wages cut, it was just depression everywhere. What is it? Horse. This total depression. And it wasn't just the workers. I mean, those with money and savings, middle class folk, you know, they were frightened they'd lose everything. Prices going up, banks closing their doors. <laughs> and when they looked to the government to do something, nothing. Social Democrats have walked out of Parliament. They said they can't agree to cut the dole. How can we afford to pay every man the dole? It's nonsense. So we have a new government. Every day we have a new government. Who would have democracy when it makes us so weak? In the face of depression, and with democracy on the point of collapse, the German people look for new solutions. In working class areas where the poverty was worst, the communists attracted six million new members. They called on workers to rise and take over factories, banks and businesses. It had happened in Russia in 1917. The Russian middle classes, factory owners, bankers, landowners, had been wiped out or forced to flee abroad. 
Unsurprisingly, most middle-class Germans saw communism as the worst threat of all. We'll keep it under our pillow. If the communists should come for us at night. Well. Into this confusion, the Nazis emerged as something new. The years since prison had changed Adolf Hitler. No longer the shuffling figure of the early newsreels. Now he was uniformed, impressive. Policy had changed too. No longer to seize power, but to win votes legally. They'd play their part in the democratic process and then destroy it from the inside. By now, Fritz Mullerbach was himself a brown shirt like Werther. Their job was to hand out leaflets, spread the word, and, by whatever means available, fight the communists. I remember one communist rally. A hundred of us brown shirts got in, in ordinary clothes. And for half an hour, we'd just sit there. And then someone slips a stick of cordite on the store. Bam! Smoke everywhere. Windows shattered. So, we stand up, put on our caps, swastika our armlets, and give the salute. The Reds start shouting, running about the place like a load of rats on heat, making for the doors. So, we smash the chairs, like we'd been taught. And armed with the chair legs, we'll go for them. Do as much damage as he can before the police arrive. It was all quite deliberate. The Nazis wanted chaos in the streets. Chaos showed the failure of democracy. It made their solution more attractive. You wear it in public? Got one for you too, if you want it. They have no respect for the law, you know. They're just bullies. Yes. Well, at least they're not gutless. And if they're not afraid to take on the communists, we shouldn't be ashamed to say thank you. In 1928, Hitler polled just 800,000 votes. In 1930, he polled six and a half million. The Nazis, from nowhere, were now the second largest party in the country. The grateful middle classes had much to do with it. But that doesn't explain Fritz Mullerbach. Working class, unemployed. He had nothing to fear from the communists. So, why? These boys, they left school, no factory, no workshop gave them a job. And now the Nazis promise work and bread. And for this, they storm into working class areas. Because they are without work and without hope. Fritz lived on eight marks, 40 pfennigs a week unemployment benefit. Five marks on rent, one mark on sausages bought from a stall outside the labor exchange, Two on bread and basics, ten pfennigs on insurance, paid to the party in case he got injured fighting communists, and thirty pfennigs on tobacco. And ninety percent of his troop were unemployed like him. But to say they joined the Nazis out of desperation, no work, no hope, that's only half the story. Straight up, I can't tell you how wonderful it feels. How wonderful it's always felt to wear this uniform, being like a soldier of the Nazi movement, with this vision, you know, a man, a leader, lifting us out of the gutter. And going to meetings, everyone's like, together, all thinking the same. It's the most wonderful thing I'd ever experienced. And all because of Adolf Hitler. All because of what he offered us what he could do for us. I mean, we just listened like...
was ich je gesagt habe. Der Wiederaufstieg Deutschlands sei nur eine Frage von wenigen Tagen. Immer und immer wieder predige ich, der Wiederaufstieg der deutschen Nation ist die Frage der Vielgewinnung der inneren Kraft und Gesundheit des deutschen Volkes. I mean, that message, the German people finding their inner strength once more. After all these years, Germany spat on by the Allies, us feeling bad about the war, the shame of Versailles, and now this man says, come, Germans, join together, refind your strength. I've never heard anything so beautiful. When we ourselves, this Deutsche Volk, and vorführen durch eigene Arbeit, eigenen Trotz, eigene Beharrlichkeit, dann werden wir wieder den Vorstein, genau wie die Väter einst auch Deutschland nicht geschenkt erhielten, sondern selbst nicht schaffen mussten. Without Hitler, the Nazis had nothing. Their vision was of national revival through obedience to a strong leader. But only Hitler had skill and charisma enough to play this role of savior. In July 32, Hitler took 13 and a half million votes, a third of the total. In January 33, as leader of the largest party in Germany, he was made chancellor. Within a month, it had the Communist Party banned. Freedom of speech, freedom from arrest, he'd sweep away. The transformation of Germany into a Nazi one-party dictatorship would begin. And if now we've got to do things that some people don't like, well, it seems to me you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Hitler was given us by God, that's what I think. And being part of him, following, no questions, that's the only way to get Germany out of the mess. No more nonsense, really do something. And that's what we're going to do.